When I was a postdoc, I wish someone would have taught me how to be a reviewer because let's face it, when you are in the earlier phase of career, you have this imposter syndrome, not even knowing if you qualify to give comment on other people's work. But let me assure you, of course you are qualified. As long as you have read and written in the subject matters that you are reviewing, you are qualified to give your opinion to improve the science of a submitted manuscript. So you are qualified as a reviewer. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Science is built upon the shoulders of giants, meaning we are reading and citing previous work, and we are developing and building more new ideas by our interpretation, by acknowledging other people's work. And in the process of finalizing these thoughts, we need peer review, a system of inviting people who are equally qualified in your field to give the feedback, to improve the science quality, as well as making it readable to audience. Well, making it readable is arguably a copywriting role, but I know a lot of reviewers do help that communication to be better. So today, if you are new as a reviewer, I hope this is going to help you provide better quality feedback to your peer so that the overall finalized pieces of science is going to be better quality. So usually when you get your document, it will be in PDFs. The one thing that I found challenging as a new reviewer is the figures and the cited figures are on very different panes. You can't really see the table and the legend side by side, which is really a very basic technical challenge that I have found. And embarrassingly, I don't know until now that you can actually open a new window on PDF Viewer. And then that solves all the problem because then you can look at the pictures, the tables and figures side by side, reviewing the results and methodology. As a rule of thumb, a reviewer obviously needs to take care of the story of the science. But for most people I've spoken with, they start with methodology and results. Do you know why? Because if a piece of scientific work, no matter how nicely it's written, if the sample number is insufficient, or if the statistical design is flawed, then you shouldn't waste your time reviewing the grammatical little errors in introduction and discussion. That's a lesson I have learned from my mentors. Always start with methodology. Always review the results and figures. If the story sounds acceptable, then you can proceed with all the minor review. Trust me, this advice has saved me so much time when I review a paper. After you have gone through the results and methodology, you realize this work is scientifically sound and the results are presented in a way that explains new ideas. That is the time you proceed to the reference list because after that you will have to look up if these references are all appropriately cited. I have recently learned there is an app online called Research Rabbit. You can find this video on Research Rabbit. I found it really helpful because they give you the clustering of similarity of references. As a new generation of reviewer, maybe we should all start using this type of approach to be more analytical about whether this paper is biased in citing only one country or one cluster of author. Are they balancing the view by citing different opinion from other paper sources? And as a reviewer, you have the right to tell them, hey, look, you are missing out all these Japanese author and you are missing out a bunch of Chinese author that have a different opinion than you guys because I think ethnic minority and women in science sometimes don't get cited. This is called an implicit bias and I hope this type of software is going to help the next generation to be more aware of our blind spots because implicit bias doesn't mean we are mean people and we try to be unfair to other people. A lot of time we just need to look at the back mirror, turn our head and find the blind spot. We all know we are never paid as a reviewer. Lots of time you're using your weekends, your holidays to review other people's work. First of all, kudos to you. Thank you for 
volunteering your free time to help improve science. When I was little, I loved volunteering to go to elderly houses, serve the society. Now becoming a scientist, reviewing is part of my life that I see as a social service. Maybe the same as posting video on this platform is a way I serve science and in a different way. If you appreciate this virtual coffee and if my food for thought is helping you to become a better scientist, don't hesitate to hit the like button and share this with anyone that you're working with so that everyone can progress a little bit more as a scientist. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.